much bigger hope for the curriculum side of education as well is for us to um, figure out how to get rid of a lot of it. This is like a crazy thing to say, um, but I feel like we try to cover way too much ground in any given day and across a year. And that the more space that we can make for projects, the more space that we can make for students to learn these concepts more deeply, to explore, to create. One of our things is, you know, the best classrooms are social and creative. Students are talking with each other. Students are making things. Students are creating graphs. Students are creating um, their own marble slides, all of these kinds of things that it just, it's hard to make enough space in a day for it. And so one of my dreams is that we find, we find that space. Um, but honestly, I just love what this group is doing. I think you're doing it right. I think this is hard work that takes time. Um, and I'm just really excited that you're doing it. Would folks like to see some ridiculous graphs? All right, let's do it. So background, yes. we uh, did this first global math art contest. We didn't um, promote it very much because everything was going so crazy. We didn't want to add anything to people's plates. And nevertheless, we ended up with over 4,000 submissions from over 100 countries. The finalists here represent um, 14 countries of these 60 graphs. Another thing that I'm extremely proud of is that almost half of the finalists were girls. And you don't see that in many art contests. You don't see, sorry, in many math contests. You don't see that in many math classrooms. Um, but just, I don't know, one more piece of evidence that truly everyone is a mathematician when we invite them in. Um, so we had three different age brackets. And each one of these graphs that you're looking at here was done by someone in the 13 to 14 age bracket. And I just want to show you a few of these because they make me so, 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 so happy. So there were a bunch of these that were focused on identity. You look at, for example, Anna Stevens, who graphed herself in front of a computer wearing a mask that I just thought was so, so poignant. And we can see that every single one of these was done as an equation. You know, this is a horizontal line inside of this folder here that we can see. Um, and then we had some that were um, animated. Uh, this one has these just really beautiful animations of the bubbles that we found so charming. This is the 13, 14. We can look at the 15, 16. Um, and we see uh, some, again, truly exceptional ones. I love some of these ones that were focused on um, the, the coronavirus, um, encouraging people to stay safe. Some of these had really elaborate animations, like this one that takes a flower blowing in the breeze and then wishes you a happy spring, all as an animation. And if we look inside of the 17, 18 age bracket, we see some truly astonishing ones. Um, one of my favorites was this, you know, genuinely fine art self-portrait um, that a student did using nothing but the Desmos colors uh, to, to draw this. It takes a little bit of time to render because it is a complicated graph, but here's a self-portrait that a student drew. Um, so, wow, so cool. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, so, <laughs> Randolph, send this to all of the business folks and say, you know what you need to do is support this kind of project. Um, this is where we can see this intersection of math and art and identity and power and all of the stuff that we're trying to achieve. And with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to you, Jamila, and thank you again for having me and for all of the work that everyone on this call does in this crazy time. <laughs>